Hello everyone, welcome to Zing This. And you got me, Zinger. <laughs> um, were you confused on who you are? <laughs> for a moment, for a moment. <laughs> and uh, you have me, Ellie. So what do we got to discuss today? Uh, well, I definitely wanted to... Um, I kind of wanted to discuss some stuff that I was excited about after D23. And I've got some stuff from Comic-Con that I'm excited about. But first, something that wasn't really mentioned at either of them. Telltale Games. Yes. We tweeted about this. We tweeted about them, you know, hey, we're not going to be doing anything with, you know, Batman or, you know, Wolf Among Us. And then a few days later, they're like, actually, (laughs) we're kidding. We're doing stuff with them. Uh, Batman the Enemy Within comes out on August 8th. So right. that's so actually, soon. I yes. know that that's really quick. And we're supposed to be getting another chat, um, another season of The Wolf Among Us, which yes. love that game. Yay. And if you're interested in that, we did a review of that comic. If you go back in our, ooh, that's way back there. Yeah. Yeah. One of, one of our way back episodes and check that out where we discuss, we kind of discuss the game and the first volume of the comic for Fables. So. I love the way we string way back and it hasn't even been a year yet. <laughs> We're closing in on it. We're closing in on it. I know. I just think it's funny. <laughs> but, but yeah, so I'm, I'm excited about this. It definitely made my day to see that. And I didn't realize the Batman game Enemy of Thing was going to be that quick. Yeah, I had no around idea. Around the corner. So yeah. that's, that's really cool. And we were watching the trailer and went, whoa. <laughs> August 8th. I know, and I got to get caught up on the, the Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy one. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, so let's get into to um, the D23. I'll, I'll, I'll let you go first on this one. Um, okay, well, there was several things that I was excited about. And then I'll just briefly mention a couple things that other people might be excited about. Yeah, we're, we're like, scratching eh. the surface on both these conventions, yes. by the way, because there's so much at both of them right. that we're just kind of quickly scratching the surface because we've got an interview with the great Scott Godleski again. He came back on to discuss Superman, Copperhead, and some other stuff, So, and pizza. And um, that will be later in the show, so we want to get to that, but we also want to you know, give you some new stuff. So Yeah. Okay. What what, what what did you pull out of D23? Uh, well, the first thing I loved were the posters for Last Jedi. The the where they have the red kind yes. of so stuff. they had they were titled the pilot, the warrior, the protege, protege, the big deal, the general, and the lost. Interesting. So I just I liked how seamless and crisp and clean they looked. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in the, in the, the theme of the red. And yeah. All of from, them. from the crate, the planet crates. And you can't really see their faces. It's kind of covered. Cut. Yeah. yeah. So I, I thought they were really cool looking. So, and they did a behind the scenes thing that I think had a few things that were very interesting in it, but that's, that's something for another day. Yes. There um, was a lot of, there was a lot of last Jedi, last Jedi stuff. So yeah. Yes. And, and I'm sure we could revisit that possibly on another theories mm-hmm. episode. <laughs> Chet has agreed to come back on, so if there's oh, another nice. trailer dropped or a lot of information, trust us, we will be on top of that. Um, they did have some information about a Big Hero 6 animated series. Yes. Super excited about that. They they handed that a while ago, yeah. so actually, and I think they actually showed like the, I guess, opening to it or something, maybe? Mm-hmm. So I'm super excited. Um, speaking of another old one coming back, um, they... We're talking about Incredibles 2, and mm-hmm. that this one was going to be focused more on Elastigirl. Interesting. Yeah, so that's going to be kind of more her story. Um, we we should discuss that at some point on the podcast. Oh, the uh, first one? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. At, at some point. To. At some point. Yes. We've, we've got a backlog of stuff we're, we're getting through right now. Well, I everybody. remember watching that movie and the end where they reveal, like, at the very end with the baby. Well, that's it's supposed to pick up right after, right. like as the credits roll. This like, one will come in. You're like, oh man, there's definitely going to be a sequel in you know just a year or so. I'm so excited, and you're like, crickets, crickets. You know, three years, five years. Well, yeah. now we're finally getting something. <laughs> so we're excited, super excited about that. Um, just they showed some first images from Lion King. Ooh. And and can we just can we just take a second and remind everybody you have donald glover as simba mm-hmm. which is awesome i love yeah. donald glover um of course james earl jones is coming back as mufasa, as mufasa. um and john favreau's directing yes that's yes. definitely a good combination there so 
super excited so check that out there's some like i said there's some first images and stuff like that from lion mm-hmm. king um wreck it ralph sequel it like killed yes. the internet <laughs> yes and they're supposed to be like going to the internet or have something to do with the internet yeah, and now they, there was there's supposed to be all the disney princesses in it mm-hmm. and um some other video game franchises and yes. all kinds of stuff so it looks looks really fun really cool um and wrinkle of time that looks amazing Yes, um, I, I thought that looked interesting. I know that's a big book that a lot of people have read, mm-hmm. so getting a adaptation, a modern adaptation of that would be would definitely be something I think a lot of people. Oprah would like. Winfrey looks cool as ever. Mm-hmm. I thought she looked really neat. Chris Pine's in it. Reese Witherspoon. So there's a lot of good, a lot of, a lot of good, a good big cast. names in there. Yeah, um, and just a few other things. Uh, I can't not mention Aladdin. They're finally releasing um, who's going to play Aladdin. Mm-hmm. Uh, who is? I'm going. I'm so sorry. Um, Mina Masood, Masood, Mina Masood. Um, they have some images. They they showed some stuff, so you can finally reveal who that is. And of, um, of course, Naomi Scott is going to be Jasmine. Um, so I'm I'm super excited about Aladdin. Uh, the could they still have Gilbert Gottfried as um, Iago? <laughs> uh, well, he could voice it still. I, exactly. Yeah. That would work. I will kind of lead into the my last one as you're talking about uh, Comic-Con, because I know there's some Avengers stuff going on for that. But uh, Toy Story 4 and Mary Poppins 2, mm-hmm. eh, they're coming out. <laughs> you, you didn't want to mention the stuff about Kingdom Hearts? You can. I was just going to say, I mean, Kingdom Hearts has been coming out forever. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we, we got some more stuff on it. Yeah. But until I like can get the game in my hand, I'm I'm excited about Kingdom Hearts. Don't get me wrong, but oh, it's one yeah. of those I have to have the game physically in my hand to be truly excited about that one. I definitely am excited about Kingdom Hearts. Square Enix is um, one of those hurry up mm-hmm. and wait. Yeah, um, they've always been that way, and you know most of the time they have not disappointed me. So it's usually worth the wait. But yeah, it's Square. Anything with Square Enix usually is you're get very very excited about stuff, and then you're like, okay, <laughs> you, you you start to calm yourself down until you finally see it. So yes, I agree with you on that. And uh, so Toy Story four and Mary Poppins two. Like I said, a lot of people I'm sure are very excited about that. Mm-hmm. Just two things that I'm really not that like. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. That that's just me though. Mm-hmm. Toy Story is a great franchise. I'm just. I'm more excited about, like, Incredibles 2 yeah. than I would be Toy Story 4. But um, just a couple more things. Nutcracker in the Four Realms. That's intriguing to me. Mm-hmm. I, I think it looks pretty interesting. Um, and then the last thing before I, we lead into your stuff is I have to talk about, for just a few minutes, the Star Wars theme parks. Okay. I, I was wondering if we were going to mention Oh, my not. gosh. So they're, they're building one, of course, at each... Uh, Disney World and Disneyland mm-hmm. looks amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm super excited. Now let's not forget that in the I'm always forgetting because they changed the name of it. Um, it used to be the it was the one that always was the movie central one. Oh, Epcot. Uh, no, not Epcot. The MGM? other one. Yes, and then they changed it to I always forget the name of this yeah. park. But anyway, um, that's where they normally had the Star Wars stuff there. Mm-hmm. Um. And, and I liked that stuff I used to go for. They would call it Star Wars Weekends. Mm-hmm. It's usually in June. And really cool. Um, but the parks are called Galaxy's Edge. Okay. And they look really cool. I want to see more stuff, of course. But what I really want to mention, because Orlando is closest to us. Yes. Um, in Orlando, so in Florida, they're actually going to build a Star Wars hotel. Ooh. And this thing looks amazing um i highly recommend if you're a star wars fan to please look up some images and some information about this hotel i don't even want to know how much it's going to cost to stay there but they actually will have um they said they're going to have costumes and stuff that you can have that will interact with stuff in in the um in the hotel and it's like playing through it, your own storyline. Well, the parks are supposed to, you're supposed to be on a planet that is technically in canon. Yes. So that's very cool that, that you right. kind of are 
in the Star Wars but universe. But the hotel apparently is like a whole nother level experience. Oh. But it's only, I mean, I'm sure eventually it'll be in California, but it's supposed to just be in uh, Florida for right now. Awesome. So first, so super excited about that. Um, so I, I, I can't say enough, but um, the thing that'll kind of wean into yours is they did talk about the Avengers Infinity War movie, mm-hmm. Black Order, Children of Thanos. Yes, yes, yes. those those looked very they they looked very cool. His little, yes. I guess, um, henchmen or you know <laughs> bosses, boss battles yes. to to mini bosses, the mini right. mini bosses to get to him. Uh, they also revealed a trailer. I've seen some stuff on the internet, but mm-hmm. I don't know. How, it, it's one of those. I know there's been leaks, but until right. like I get a solid, this is released by them trailer i'm like not going to discuss it full production yes yeah. i'm not going to discuss it too much mm-hmm. but from the images i saw if they are for real that looks really cool right uh that's kind of also going to play into what i discussed with comic-con mm-hmm. from the same thing with the infinity war it's it's i i've seen some stuff but until i get like a here's an official you know cut and dry like the uh, Justice League, the Thor Ragnarok, or the Freddy Player One trailer, like that are cut and dry. I'm not gonna make a comment on it 100% yet. Mm-hmm. With that though, yes. with that being said, I was really excited. I'm gonna stick with Marvel. I was really excited with the Thor trailer. Um, I can pick out some stuff. I could do a breakdown of it. It was so amazing. It um it it has the the giant wolf. <sighs> I guarantee you was Fenrir. Um, when Hela is talking, when she's on Asgard, I'm guaranteeing you she's talking to Loki. Uh, having the Hulk speaking, like, more <laughs> is, it was really funny. Yeah. And the whole necklace thing is an homage to, I believe, his Ultimate Universe version when he fought Wolverine and ripped him in half. He had, oh. like, a ton of the beads and stuff yeah. just like that, so I'm wondering if okay. that's going to be kind of very similar to his persona when he was in that. But I like that. It also revealed that there is a bigger villain, uh, Surtur. Who is like the one of the big big bads of the universe? But like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on here, and um, the execute the executioner was in there too. If you mm-hmm. look, he's the guy with the uh, black tattoos on his head. Yeah. And I mean, there, there there's a lot of stuff in there. I'm really excited about it. I think it's really cool that it showed him possibly using his powers without the hammer, and that's something I've always wondered about in this universe. If if he needs the hammer to have his true power, or if he can summon it through himself. Sort of thing. So I'm wondering where they're going with that. It's, it's interesting and definitely, I think, adds a layer. Um, I just wanted to mention, I just love the way, again, they are humanizing Thor. Yeah. Just when he was kind of talking, he was kind of giving uh, me a problem. Oh, yeah. He's having was, a bad week. And, yeah, when, when he was, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming he's talking to the Hulk. I'm assuming. Uh, that's what I thought, but I mean. I know that Loki and... um. Why can't I remember his character's name? Um, Jeff Goldblum's characters are supposed oh. to be in that scene. So I don't know if he's talking to... I, I'm, I'm assuming the Hulk. That's but what it I, could be them. Right. It that's could what be, I thought I mean, it was. It's, but. it's one of those things. I'm, I'm not trying to take apart this too much. but, it but was just, I, I love the way they do that. I, think I, that's I love great. the way this movie looks. It's going to yes. be... I, I think this is going to be... A, an awesome movie and that it's there's a possibility that it's not going to have a happy ending mm-hmm. per se because of I something i saw is, this is making me excited about thor again i i've always been excited about thor i've always been but 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 the movies yeah the last one was kind of meh yeah that's what meh. i'm saying like it's, this one i'm excited yeah, about. yeah exactly so. exactly but um it's it's rival in the theaters that's going to be going up against very really close to it is justice league and <sighs> <laughs> I this trailer, I, I think I think they're trying to add a lot more comedy to it. Yeah, they they seem to be adding some humor to it, um, mm-hmm. which is cool. I I, I like that. I, I I like my superheroes to have some humor. I just don't like it to be over the top humor. Like I don't like oh, super like in quip- Star Wars. I I don't like super <laughs> quippiness through the entire like as they're fighting and everything. But they're I, I thought that one of the funniest things was Jim Gordon. Which I think Jim Gordon looks amazing mm-hmm. when he was sitting there with. Um, I'm assuming it was Wonder Woman, Batman, The Flash, and Cyborg might have been there. And he mentions, you know, we're gonna, you're gonna need more. And he turns around, everyone's gone except for the Flash. Who, oh you my know, gosh, that was adorable. And he's like, oh, oh wow, they they really do just vanish on you. How, how rude! How rude! And then he <laughs> jets off. Um, yes. 
So this trailer, I think, looks awesome. There is a part at the end that I'll get to in a second. I'm not trying. I'm trying to. I'm not trying to rush, but I'm trying to kind of discuss this at a fast pace. Because like I said we got an interview with Scott that that is definitely a lot of fun. I'm make sure to bring a piece of pizza. But um, in the trailer, yes, Steppenwolf is is shown. I'm I'm assuming he's the one that's talking the whole time, but he's the big bad of this, and he mentions something that I find very interesting. He says, "No lanterns." No Kryptonians. And I find that interesting because apparently they know of what Kryptonians can do. Like the abilities that they have. But the mention of lanterns I think is interesting. Because it's been long speculated that there's going to be lanterns appearing in this. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do. But who knows? I mean, I'm, I'm sure they have to because they've revealed that they will be doing a lantern movie soon. So, they've got to reveal them at some point, unless they're going to really have them just be their own movie. But the other thing is at the end of it. Oh, by the way, most epic hair flip ever by Aquaman when he yeah. surfs the, um, the the demon down oh. through the building and then does the hair flip. He also, is just beautiful. Also, I like Cyborg, you know, having his hand come apart and jam into the oh my that, that, that bat. There were whatever. so many awesome It, it, it was. It looks really cool. Wonder yes. Woman had a great, you know, everyone had a great moment in that. Um, the Flash being like, I, 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 I don't know how to battle. I just kind of push guys and run away. And I was like, that, well, that was great. it's the quirky Flash. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's it's one that's not as established with his mm-hmm. powers and everything, which I kind of like that that they're right. that, like like he's the one learning too, even though he's probably one of the strongest ones out of them with power. Well, I wise. mean, when the when the Flash fully uses what he can do, mm-hmm. like uses all his potential, then, yeah, yeah, oh, he's yeah. he's. Pretty... I, I think Flash is a very underrated character <laughs> yeah, in the DC is. universe. He any is. of them, but but at the end, mm-hmm. at, at at the end, we we got a we got Alfred sitting there and. There's the glass move, the water moving, and he said, "Oh, he said you come." Right. Who do you think that is? Oh gosh. <sighs> See, I, I feel like they want you to think it's Superman, but I feel like it's not. I think it's Superman because they also revealed a, a poster, a possible poster. Okay. I don't know. I, like I said, I could not confirm one hundred percent if I didn't see like anyone holding it, but it right. did show someone to the back of it, and it showed like heat vision coming down. Okay. Um. The rumor is it's one of these people. Superman, the Green Lantern, a Green Lantern, like, Martian oh, Manhunter, yeah. or Shazam. Okay. I don't think it's Green Lantern because there was a mention of no lanterns earlier, and I don't think they would have they would have had some glow to them. You can see a slight red, possibly, because it's, you kind of see the shoulder. So that could either be Shazam or... It could be Martian Manhunter, but I don't mm-hmm. think it's going to be either of them. I do think it is the 100% return of Superman, unless they are really revealing somebody out of the blue that no one's expecting. So, who knows? Final thing I'm going to go over real quick, and I know there's a lot more at Comic-Con that I could talk right, about, but we're, we're, we're limiting ourselves right. on this for this episode. Ready Player One. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I've ever expressed my love for Steven Spielberg on here yet, but I love Steven Spielberg. I think, you know, his movies are amazing. He is a very talented director. I, I love almost everything he's done. This movie looks to be a very interesting amalgamation of, like, all of our childhood. Like, it, it feels like someone took a toy box from our from your childhood and just dumped it out and was like here's all the stuff you get to put in this movie you saw the iron giant you saw the delorean several times but if you notice one of the characters was using the assault rifle from halo so i think this looks interesting i'd love to see where it goes but i guess we're gonna have to see i i, I was excited about it it, it seems interesting you want to see more on it first. <laughs> I, I was not that excited. Yes. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I just, I didn't think it looked that, I feel like they were just trying to shove so much crap in a trailer. <gasps> Do you know what I'm trying to say? I, I understand. Like I said, my, my nostalgia buttons got hit, so I was like, <gasps> Well, yeah, of course. I mean, you see a DeLorean, you get excited. I mean, that's obvious. Um, you know, the and, Iron and, Giant. And I, I, when I watched, I was like, oh, gosh, that's the Iron Giant. You know, so I, but I've got to have a lot more for it to be a good movie. Like, you, anybody can just throw a bunch of stuff together and be super excited about it. So, I, 
eh, I'm not as excited as you are. All right. Not until I see more. All right, cool. Well, we're going to go to a break, and when we come back, we're going to be joined by the great Scott Godleski. <laughs> Yay! So, we'll see you guys on the other side of this break. This has been... This Sing is. This. this is. Sing this. There we go. My name is Carrie Sims, and I host Sketching Comedy with my artist friends, Imran Javed. Hey, that's me! And Phil Rude, each week live on YouTube. Hang out with us as I learn and discuss the legends of comic book art and comedians while the fellows are creating live drawings during the show. I learned Stan Lee defied the Comic Code Authority with an anti-drug comic. That's right, Carrie, but did you know the Hulk wasn't supposed to be green? He was supposed to be gray! The printer screwed it up! Visit BlazingCaribouStudio.com or tune in each week on our YouTube channel and download the podcast at iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever podcasts are found. Sketch you later! Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Zing This. you got me, Zinger. And I'm Ellie. And we are joined by a very special guest once again. And I'm Scott. There you go. <laughs> Woo! So, um, we're having Scott on. Uh, he was on previously to discuss Copperhead, but he mentioned that he was going to be doing artwork for Superman over the summer. Well, it's that time. We have two of the three issues you're doing, correct, out available now? Uh, yeah, yep. There are two of my three currently on the stands. Yes. Awesome. So we've got uh, Superman 26, 27, and 28 will be coming out on August 2nd. Um, and that will conclude, I guess, road trip? The, this, this little road trip that the Kents have gone on? Yes, that's a two-parter. Let's talk about issue 26 real quick. Uh, this one you said was your inventory issue? Yeah, yeah. So that's what they call an inventory issue. So I think it it must have been August or September of last year. They got a hold of me and asked if I would like to do one. Um, so we put that together. I, I wasn't sure if it was ever going to see print, maybe in an annual or something. Um, but after they wrapped um, their their big uh, story arc in twenty five. Uh, to give the guys a break, they decided to slot it in there when I already had uh, a couple of scheduled issues coming in after that. Yeah, so my two issues turned into three issues. Awesome, awesome. Well, that that one was very cool, and it kind of was a it, it was a nice standalone story, and it was one that I, I kind of flipped through when I first got it as sort of I, I didn't want to read anything. I just wanted to flip through and you know look look at the art, and I felt like you did a great job with the artwork of I didn't need to read a single word to know what the story was. So I just want to say from from me I I really enjoyed the fact of that. And then of course I did go back and read it too, but I just thought that was really yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean that that's really the ultimate goal of the artist on any comic book is to make the writer obsolete. <laughs> can and can we yeah. take a second? <laughs> that, that was a joke. Sorry writer. <laughs> <No. laughs> I, I I just wanted just to mention really quick the it's it's in both issues but the uh, the Snickers ad where the kid turns into to Grood Gro- 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 Grod um, it that's hilarious. No, I was flipping through that and I uh, sorry <laughs> or, no I was flipping through it and I was like wait why is the flash I, there why is Gro- I I'm know confused. I was like huh. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I just thought that was great. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, they do kind of drop it in there. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's really. It's, it, it, I I can see how that how uh, you know if you don't really understand what you're looking at immediately, that it can take you uh, <laughs> take you a minute to figure out what's happening. Yeah, I I, I, I I'm it, just I hadn't looked at it until just now. I'm flipping through it. Yeah. I don't know why. The Flash logo is on the back of this dude's shirt. No, it's, I guess it's his, funny. his back is always to the camera. And I, um, I thought you you really nailed the um, Superman's son and just the 
the smugness of you know everything kind of look on his face. Uh, it's I really did enjoy that, being that we have kids. I just was like, oh, I've seen that look way too many uh, times. Yeah, I, I have a nine-year-old. I have reference walking around here. <laughs> so, yeah, that was really, really good. I love that. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so, going to the, the, the newish is- issue, uh, 27 real quick i just wanted to say you know this this came out as of record it came out today so i picked it up earlier and um read through and everything i thought it was was a really interesting story actually um and you actually had a tweet that that you responded to that i just happened to notice earlier where it was um someone was saying if, if i could teach this in my class i would yeah i saw that um from, from an english teacher mm-hmm. i think it was yeah, so I had I had to read my uh, my response a few times to make sure I didn't have any <laughs> spelling or grammatical errors. Well, I, like I said, I just thought that I mean the the art, of course, your art's great, but I thought it was very interesting the way that it was. It's it's a really interesting story and a really kind of down to earth Superman story too of just you know him them them just trying to be a family on a vacation. And yeah, it, it really is a break from, uh, I guess the, the usual superhero fair. Uh, it's, it's almost a, a day in the life sort of thing. Well, I got a question actually on that since, um, I know that you're West coast. Um, a lot of the places they were visiting were East coast. So did you, have you been to the East coast before or were you just using references for the, for the, um, statues and stuff and the landmarks they went to? Oh yeah, reference for everything. I've uh, I've been as far east as Baltimore, and uh, and that's it. Other than that, yeah, I have not been uh, east of the Mississippi. <laughs> cool. I just wanted to ask on that real quick because because uh, I mean I've I've been to a few of the places that 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 you drew, so it was really cool to kind of see them in art form, and I really. Oh really enjoyed the fact that they went uh boogie boarding down the <laughs> down niagara falls I, I i thought that that was it was one of those things that i saw it and i'm like you know what i can see superman doing that like that that that, that, that there would be some way for him to have fun yeah i i must have been uh googling that because not too long ago i got an alert that some guy went over the falls for the second time he went over one time and mm-hmm. was fine but he went over a second time and he died Ooh. So, yeah. So there's your bummer for the show. Oh, <laughs> well, at least we got out of the way early. <laughs> well, and and I wanted to point out um, in issue twenty seven that um, <laughs> I thought it was hilarious that you have the coexist bumper sticker uh, because <laughs> I don't know how many times I've seen that bumper sticker, and you know, children have asked that same question. What what is oh, really? what does that mm-hmm. mean? Yeah, yeah, we see them all the time where we are, um, and and so that definitely made it very lived in and believable that they are just a, a normal family kind of <laughs> just traveling around. So I, I just that one little square it, that was like, what? <laughs> oh, I've seen that bumper sticker. So I thought that was really yeah. Cool. We see that all the time out here. Too. Oh, okay, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's weird because I mean, when you think about it, it's a nice sentiment. Um, and I remember reading an article not too long ago that people who uh, put bumper stickers on their car are actually like 27% more likely to be in a road rage incident or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, I don't well, think we have no, any we, on we, our we, car. We don't have any on either of our vehicles. I, 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 I had to think good. about it too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, do we... No, we don't. Okay, good. I know. We don't even have those little uh, stick families. No. Nah. Even though I think I've tried to talk you into doing like the Star Wars one or something. You're nah, like, no. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Wait, do, do, you, do you see the back of the of, of the RV? I wonder if they have a little little Superman symbols for everyone oh. in their family. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, spoilers. They don't. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um. Well, like I said, I enjoyed the artwork for it. I'm really looking forward to the next um, issue and everything. So, so that's definitely really cool. But we wanted to have some fun since we know from the last time you were on, you're a big Superman fan. And 
I, I know that, that you were very excited to actually be able to draw issues of Superman too. So we wanted Correct. to Correct. Yeah. So we wanted to kind of have some fun with discussing Superman with you for a little bit. Oh boy, all right. Alright, so I guess since I, I'm just I'm just gonna do this one first. I'm I'm, I'm gonna do an oddball one first because of the um post you made right before <laughs> we, we went on. Um <laughs> Is Superman a beer or hard liquor guy, in your opinion? Uh, he's probably uh, uh, one of those like hard soda guys. Hard soda? Like, so uh, like Mike's hard, hard, hard lemonade? Hard beer or hard... Uh, or, yeah, or, yeah, but like... Uh, uh, what is it called? Um, like uh, not your father's... Yeah, root beer. Root beer, yeah, or cream soda or something. Something, uh, you know, something not quite as edgy as uh, an IPA. Because that's, <laughs> I think that's a bridge too far for Superman. But something that's still maybe like, uh, yeah, the alcoholic version of something you could get in a soda shop. Okay, I, I can I, I can actually kind of see that now. That's, <laughs> that's, that's definitely a good one. Or he's a guy that... You know, secretly pours out the glass when somebody's not looking into the faint plant next to him. <laughs> yeah. I can kind of see that, too, because, I mean, <laughs> go, go, going, t- taking the fun out of this, I don't think alcohol would really do anything for him as a... No, uh, probably not. Lo- yeah. Lois is totally a wine gal. But... Yes, yes, we, we, we did get to see that in, in, the, newest, in the new issue. She, she did enjoy, a gl- wanted to enjoy a glass of wine, but see, duty called. I- her and I are kindred spirits. There you go. <laughs> I guess another one is favorite villain of Superman. Ooh. Um, I guess Lex is probably, if he's not the best villain, he's probably the, the most infamous villain. Um, so he's kind of boring. I've always been a big fan of Cyborg Superman. Interesting. Like the the half face robot and you know the one arm and the one leg. Um, I was like Doomsday. That's definitely uh, a good one. <laughs> ooh, uh, Mr. Mitzelplick. Mitzelplick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gosh, my favorite villain. Yeah, I'll go with Cyborg Superman. Cyborg it, it's Superman. It's just a cool look. I I can really I can definitely cool dig that. It, it may be like super campy, but and very. I, I dig it. Was wasn't he a byproduct of the early nineties too? He or... was one of the Supermen during the reign of the Superman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, after Doomsday killed Clark, so he showed up with Eradicator and. Steel and Superboy. Awesome. Ellie. Okay, I, I, I'm a little weird, so I, I got one. Um, let's say you and Superman are are having like a boys night out. What mischief would you get into? Uh, I dig this question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, the obvious answer is x-ray vision. Right? Yeah. Are, are we, are we but... accidentally sneaking into college dorm ladies or what's, what's going on here uh gosh um uh, i don't know i'm kind of a homebody <laughs> so but i i'm also incredibly cheap so i don't like to to pay the delivery fee and the tip on pizza uh, <laughs> so okay. maybe i could order a pizza for pickup and he could just get it real quick <laughs> order a pizza from new york and get it picked up real quick oh, man. oh there you go can yeah. you imagine just being able to get wherever you want it's no big deal oh that'd be that's great. it right there well i was about to say the only problem with the x-ray vision is it, superman would only have the x-ray vision so what would he be doing describing what he's saying I yeah i guess so it, <laughs> yeah that, that doesn't work at all you need to do the uh maybe there's some way to do the uh the power switcheroo like yeah. at the end of Superman 2. Well, well, okay, if you had the powers of Superman, probably just do exactly what what, what we just said. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, I 
I wouldn't leave the house. <laughs> so, oh man, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what I could use any of that for. Um, I guess I could use his heat vision to just sit at my drawing table and heat up like frozen pizzas or something so I don't have to go downstairs. I see a pizza theme. Yeah, pizza is <laughs> a very big theme apparently. <laughs> I hope the next question is pizza related. <laughs> uh, uh oh, I know. That's hold on, wait. Let, 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 let me wait, see if I can, can do, do this. this? Okay. Um, okay. If you want the <laughs> next question to be pizza related, would uh would would Superman be a Chicago deep dish pizza or would he be? Oh, a New there York, we go. You, you, New, New oh, York style Superman. Because uh, well, you could technically I mean, draw it too. It's a you, lot closer to New York than Chicago. Um, if you're going to get nerdy about it, you have let's, to. Yeah, let's get nerdy. <laughs> um, so it's got to be New York, right? I'm, I'll, I'll go with that. I was about to say. I mean, since you're the since you're the artist, you could technically. They just said pizza. You could draw whichever one you wanted. Yeah, um, I'm also really lazy, uh, and I would imagine that there are more lines on a Chicago style pizza. <laughs> I'll go with New York. Well, all right, hold on. I got another one. We're right, gonna we're, right. we're rolling the pizza train right now. I I got one too. <laughs> okay, so my answer is pizza. <laughs> okay, well, hold on. All right, so since you don't leave to, like to leave the house and you like pizza, we're gonna continue this scenario. Let's say you're having a house party, and Superman is there, and you're Superman's wingman. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, there's pizza there because it's a house party. What what kind of like what does Superman do as a wingman? Or do you just give up because it's Superman and you're like nobody is going to want to talk to me because Superman's here? <laughs> okay, so I'm Superman's wingman. Yes. Yes. Oh man. But, I, but oh, I, hold on, hold on. I got a question though. Is it Clark <laughs> Kent? Oh god! Or is right. it, or is it Superman standing there in the suit? Because I don't know. I I want to. I I think if I was at a party, I'd I want to see just Superman standing there in a suit. And he would still need Scott as a wingman yes. in this situation. Yes. All right, that's and the scenario for you. I would be just the worst. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if, if there's anybody that could get that dude unlaid, it would be me. <laughs> Oh, oh! All right, that's a, that's a good <laughs> answer. Nobody's ever asked that question ever in the history of people. <laughs> Congratulations, Ellie. Thank you. Leave it to me. <laughs> so I, I guess I guess I guess I'll finish our pizza themed questions, which okay. apparently is a thing. That's right. I want pizza now. I'm hungry. I know. We we're we're, we're slowly building to us eating pizza. Um, pineapple on pizza. Would Superman be a fan of that? Um, well, you know, he's a, he's a man of the people. Um, uh, he's worldly. Um, I, I think he would embrace, uh, the cultural differences in pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he's probably down. He seems like that kind of guy. He'd have his, uh, his hard cream soda and a piece of Hawaiian pizza. Well, I think this is the longest discussion that has ever been had that involved Superman and pizza. <laughs> so, congratulations to us on that. It was fun. <laughs> but so you mentioned Superman two earlier. What, in your opinion, is the best film version of Superman, or or the best Superman movie thus far? Well, seventy eight Superman still gives me goosebumps. Uh it still makes me believe a man can fly and all that sappy garbage. <laughs> um, though I, Superman Two is pretty cool. Uh, the fight scenes are neat. Uh, I think all the s- weird stuff with the Fortress at Solitude and the stuff with Lois is pretty boring, but the fight stuff was cool. Uh, Superman 3 was bonkers. Yeah. In a good way. Um, and Superman 4, man, I don't remember anything about Superman 4. I'm pretty sure I actually saw that in the theater. Ugh. I just remember something 
about an elevator and a fight on the moon. Yeah. Whatever. That's about right. Uh, you know, I wasn't a big fan of Man of Steel. Uh, Superman Returns was uh, why anybody would make a sequel to a 25-year-old movie is beyond me. Uh, yeah, uh, by far, it's Superman 1. Awesome. Absolutely, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I will even forgive the, the scene at the end with the flying backwards around the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, Richard Donner, a regular cut of Superman 2, though. Or have you seen the Richard Donner cut? Uh, no, I've only seen whatever they show on TBS. All right. Cool. I just wanted to ask that because I know that there's the Richard Donner How cut. How different now. is it? What? You know, here's the funny thing. I've really not seen the original version of 2. I've really only seen the Richard oh, Donner really? cut. So, I mean, I it's kind huh. of hard for me to compare them. I guess I need to watch both of them now back to back so I can do a better comparison of them. Huh. Well, it, I'm sure it's better. I mean, it's um, it's more different than, like, the, I guess, whatever ultimate version of... Um, Batman versus Superman versus the versus the regular. It's more different than that. I know that. Uh, so. I'll have to track that down. Yeah, I have no idea. I, I have no idea. It, it, I think that theatrical version was fine. I'm, I'm okay with it. If they would cut out all the Niagara Falls, is he or isn't he Superman garbage, I'd be okay with that. Superman's gone through several different costume changes or different outfits over the years. What's your favorite one that he's he's um donned, I guess? Uh, I kind of dig the current one. It's just the classic suit, but minus the underoos. Oh, that was my next question actually Her was boxes are brief. No, no, I, I was I was going to say <laughs> do you, do you want your Superman to have his, know how to put his underwear on properly or does he still put <laughs> it on outside of his? So I guess you answered that one. Uh yeah, I mean, I just aesthetically as a, as a, a modern day design, I prefer it without the underpants. Um, I don't think it's that big a deal to not have them. I mean, it, they turned his belt red, so you still have that bit of red yeah. in the middle of the costume. But uh, no, yeah, I I I dig the one now. I, I guess the runner up would be the classic underpants costume but no you know what i'm a huge fan of the black costume yeah the, so the, the maybe that would one. be my two by a slim margin that beats out the classic mine to be honest and this is a subtle one is his normal outfit but instead of the yellow on the s it's black it was something oh, very yeah, the su- kingdom yeah. come superman yeah yeah that 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 one's the one I like a lot. I don't know what it is about the having the S have the black background. I really like that. Yeah, that that really works. It's probably in my top five. All right, so this one might be might be a little hard to, for you to do on the spot. But what oh, is one other of you... than how would I do a Superman's wingman? <laughs> okay, maybe not I'm that sorry. hard. I don't think so. <laughs> Superman's been around for for years and had plenty of different adventures. What would be one of your favorite storylines that they've done with him? Oh man. Um, one of the single issues that stand out in my mind is, is action 775 by Joe Kelly and a bunch of guys, um, where he fights, uh, the elite in Manchester black. They're like, a like authority analogs. So I, I think it, it must have been 2000, 2001, something like that. So the authority and this, you know, the big sort of uh, anti-superhero movement was happening. You know, mm-hmm. The ultra-violent heroes fighting, you know, ultra, ultra-violent bad guys. It's a cool story. So, so yeah, so it, it was Superman's response or DC Superman response to uh, to this new wave of uh, superhero comics. Um, so the, the, this group of uh, you know 
hip, cool, new ultra-violent superheroes uh, challenge Superman to uh, to this battle, and he ends up kicking all their butts. And uh, it's it, it just it went a long way to remind you that. That uh, in this case, the original is the best. That's the one single issue that stands out in my mind. I was a big fan. I was a kid when um, that the Superman came around, mm-hmm. and uh, that that was like a it, it was like a giant action movie that was that was playing through. I don't know. There were four Superman titles at the time, I think, and. Uh, so you get one a week. So week after week after week, this Doomsday shows up. And he's getting closer and closer to Metropolis, and he's, you know, taking out the Justice League and Green Lantern, and and he gets to Metropolis, and then that uh, Superman seventy five is just the. Uh, it's all splash pages. So it's it must have been. I don't know if they were twenty two at the time. So you get twenty two splash pages of just doomsday and superman just wailing on each other uh just uh i i haven't revisited it so i don't know how well it holds up now but you know 11 year old me love that stuff yeah i I remember when i was in school and some kid had that like one of the comics and brought it in everyone was like (gasps) (laughs) i have the graphic novel yeah death of superman yeah i still have the the trade um I somehow it managed to sit outside on uh, the back patio at my dad's house for months. So it's all weathered and wrinkled and nasty. Oh. But I still flip through it every <laughs> every couple of months. But the um, the one you're talking about with Manchester Black, they actually I think made that into one of their DC animated movies, Superman versus the Elites. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's right. And he he actually came back, and he turned out to be uh, the big bad in mm-hmm. uh, Superman twenty five. Yeah, yeah. I just remember that one because they like Superman takes them all on and just basically manhandles them as a cool yeah, Superman it, does. Yeah, it was it was fantastic. Yeah, Manchester Black has. I, I'm going to get into spoiler territory. Uh, it's an old like, comic. <laughs> crazy psychic powers and. Uh, as he's standing there monologuing in front of uh, Superman in their final showdown, he's uh, telling Supes, you know, that, you know, he's a dinosaur and the world, uh, the world's different now and he doesn't have a place in it anymore. And just as he's about to use his powers to crush Superman, he goes to do it and he can't do it because Supes is, uh, while he was talking, focused his heat vision through his retina into his brain and cut out the piece of his brain that gives him God. superpowers. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Great stuff. And great use of his powers, because Superman can do anything if he wants to. <laughs> yeah, he's a f- brain surgeon. Exactly. <laughs> That's um, awesome. So, speaking of Superman can do anything... In your opinion, is there anyone in DC Universe that can beat Superman? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I guess if you're a Batman guy, Batman can beat anybody. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Just is looking at me. Uh... Oh, no. Because you had the uh, audible uh... sigh to you about it. <laughs> I know. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I would guess so. I mean, a bat- a, a Superman... It, it, just because of his his emotional limitations, I think he's not willing to go as far as some people. Um, and, and you know, that's uh, I, I guess that that's the part of the character you need if you've got a guy who can move planets and hear clouds scrape together and stuff. <laughs> he has to have some weakness. So his weakness is, you know, you know his his emotional and personal connections to people that can be hurt. Um, so uh, somebody is going to use that against him and, you know, he'll throw in the towel and do whatever he needs to do to protect people. I mean, barring that and just like, you know, uh, a fist fight behind the gym. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's normally my argument too about Superman. I'm like, he's, he's got his moral code, which stops him from going that far. So that's the only 
that's his biggest weakness, but his biggest strength, too, in my opinion. Right. Well, how about this? All right. Because it's, um, it's a mixture of tiredness and coffee. This just came in my head. <laughs> so this is dangerous. Since, you know, Superman can do anything because it's, you know, it's Superman. And my answer is pizza. No. <laughs> okay, well, maybe it could be. So let's just say you're chilling at your house because you don't like to go anywhere. <laughs> Superman comes over hanging out and he's like, hey, let's get like bestie tattoos. And so <laughs> Superman is using his, his laser vision. Now, you know, a- unless there's some upgrade that the laser vision can then etch colors into your skin like a tattoo we're gonna go oh, it's with it's a, yeah we're just gonna go with it's a brand like we're branding you now would you have mm. superman brand the superman crest on you or would you have nice. him do something uh-huh. else or it could be a pizza uh-huh. you could have him brand a, a pizza. pizza uh pizza tattoo okay yeah. um <laughs> you know this is uh yeah this tops the other one this is weirder <laughs> Um, You're welcome. <laughs> would I let him brand me? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um. No, no, I don't <laughs> think so. I, I, I would tell Superman that's not cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go with no. Okay, okay, no. just making sure. No, it sounds like we're just sitting around. We're like bored, we're looking for <laughs> to do, and it's like, <laughs> hey. Hey, you know I got you heat vision. Me, <laughs> yeah, you let me burn this picture of a pizza onto you? I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> so now I have that story about the time that Superman branded a pizza onto my ass. Well, I mean, <laughs> it would be a good conversation starter if you were ever bored. People are like, what is that? Well, be well let me tell you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, that conversation began and ended in one foul swoop. <laughs> All right, so I, I think we have come to the, <laughs> at the moment, logical end of the Superman discussion. For better or for <laughs> worse. <laughs> for better or for worse, Ellie killed it. Hey, you said you wanted to have fun and have a, a just a chill conversation about <laughs> Superman. So Apparently that also involves pizza with, with, with you guys, too. With multiple scenarios, yes. So I guess let's move over to... Actually, before we move to Copperhead, I actually had a question for you, and I know that it's something you brought up on your podcast, the the, uh, the illustrious gentleman. And I just found this interesting. I was wondering if you could explain that to our audience as well. Um, that you had to do a touch up for a comic, and I know that 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 you got the ongoing. Can you guess which one it is? But I just wanted to know if oh, you could right. explain to our audience because I found that actually really interesting the whole like what you had to do sure um sure so in the process of making comics um there are pencilers and then there are anchors and the the anchors you know as explained in chasing amy just trace stuff (laughs) Um, so but uh, and they're not not always the same guy so i i happen to pencil and ink my own stuff um, some guys just pencil, so they have inkers that they work with to, you know, make the black and white line art that's going to be, uh, you know, photo ready for, for colors. Um, and, uh, so it, in that case, it, it, a lot of guys do full pencils. Well, they'll do full renderings. The inker just has to, has to go over the top of it and, uh, you know, add, you know, line weight and it'd fill in blacks and um, it pretty standard, easy sort of stuff. But occasionally you're going to have finishes where the penciler is just going to lay out a page. So he's going to rough in figures and um, sort of just uh, sort of approximate what the final image is going to be. So a finisher is going to be an inker who also finishes the pencils. Um and on this particular book, um, I'm, I'm sure it was going to, I, I, I think it needed to go to print either that afternoon 
or the next day, or go to colors. I'm sorry, go to prints. Ridiculous. It needed yeah, go to colors. Say, I think that afternoon. Um, so, yeah, I, I got an email saying, "Hey, um, could you help us out with, with uh, a few pages, if you could?" I said, "Sure." So they sent me. It ended up being just one page. It was it was a pretty simple page, um, but uh, yeah. So I got to do. It was somewhere between finishes and inks on uh, uh, over the top of another guy that I'm a big fan of. Um, and it was sort of this weird experience, though. I mean, because they, they needed it right away, but it it's hard enough working for me just as I'm just sort of stressed out and anxiety ridden <laughs> all the time about my own stuff. But then to have to sort of, in my brain anyway, nobody asked me to, to approximate the look of somebody else's stuff, Oof. who's in my brain is just 10 times better than me already. Um, so this really simple page, which I probably could have banged out in about an hour, it took me about three hours to do. I'm just, just killing myself over every line. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I think on the show I described it as, you know, uh, instead of being, like, 50% him and 50% me, it was just 100% <laughs> 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 Um But, yeah, no, so, uh, it, it, yeah, if anybody can, uh, if anybody has an eye for my stuff and uh, thinks that they can track down that issue and that page and, uh you know, get it correct. Maybe, maybe I'll send you something or, uh, you know, probably not though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. I, I, I thought saw, I saw that was yeah. very interesting when you explained it and everything. So I was like, oh, I, I'd love to have him tell, tell that. Cause I, that, that's something, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it happens and everything. I just never had heard somebody talk oh, yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it happens quite a bit. I don't know. I mean, I would think that for them to get to me, um, you know, they're scraping <laughs> the bottom of the barrel. And I think they had something like 11 pages done on a 20 page comic that had to go to colors right away. Um, so I would think there were maybe three or four different guys other than myself working on that book. Um, so, uh, I mean, aesthetically, it should be a hoot. Uh, it's going to be all over the place. Well, I guess everyone should keep an eye out and try to find out what comic that was and which yeah. one you you um, attempted to do. Yeah. Well, I, I'll give your your listeners an exclusive hint. It was page eleven of the of the secret comic. All right, so here, there, everyone, so go, go find through page 11. every comic at your local shop and check out page eleven. <laughs> You might get strange looks from behind the counter. <laughs> <laughs> Going to Copperhead. This is, of course, I, I, if people haven't listened to your first interview, I'm just going to kind of, I guess, go over this real quick. Um, you are the co-creator, and you will be returning as the artist for the fifth arc of the Image comic. But you revealed... That is the plan, yes. You revealed recently a very interesting fact about the fifth arc as well, if you wouldn't mind telling our audience about that. Sure. Um, it's all about pizza. Oh! Yeah. And it comes full circle. <laughs> nice! Ah, callback! <laughs> um, no, um, so, Jay, you know, he's got... Uh, he's a staff writer on Zoom. He's got... Um, his other image book, I think, premiering next month, I yep. want to say, elsewhere. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's a sort of uh, an Amelia Earhart uh, historical fantasy fiction sort of thing. Uh, it's really cool. I would uh, encourage everybody to check it out. We um, definitely yeah, do and that he's as got well. um, some other things happening too. So, um, yeah. Um, seeing as how I was going to draw it anyway. And, um, you know, we, we have a really good rapport 
and working relationship. Um, he said, you know, how, how would you feel about co-writing the fifth arc? And I said, sure. Yeah. That, that'd be great. I mean, you know, as sexy as being an artist is, I think <laughs> Chick Dick writers more. Um, yeah, and it gives me an excuse to get some sort of weird facial hair. <laughs> now that I'm a writer. So would this be your first um, time writing for a, com- for a comic? This would be my first published work outside of just uh, my own stuff, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's just co-writing, so uh, whatever that turns out being. It, it's certainly co-plotting. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if I can put one word in a character's mouth that makes it to a printed page, I'll be happy. No, that's that's just something that, that, that I know you had kind of hinted at the other day, and then I was like, oh, man, I, I'd, I'd love to talk to you about that, because... I mean, we're we're really enjoying the direction Copperhead's going in, and we hopefully will have um, Jay on again soon to discuss his Amelia Earhart and some more Copperhead stuff and stuff about Zoo nice. too. So, so I guess yes. there's a there's a, there's a quick look for our fans into what we're working on in the near future. But no, I, I just wanted to talk about that and everything. I mean, it's really cool to have you back on. I, I think they've, they've done a great job, but have, having you back on, I think, will be really cool to have you back and everything. So, so I'm, I'm definitely excited, especially where, where the story's going, because it, it seems very interesting, and I'm not going to try to pry anything out of you, because I don't want anything spoiled. Yeah, well, I, I'm just, I'm just going to pitch him the weirdest shit. Just, I, it, it, all of his responses are going to be like, yeah, that's cool, but... But I was thinking, you, you know, <laughs> on the other end of the email, he's rolling his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Um, I just want to thank you again for for joining us, Scott. And um, where's the best place for people to find you on the internet? Um, uh, I, I suppose Twitter is probably the best place at uh, Scotty God S C O T T Y G O D. Um, yeah, I'm loudest on Twitter. I've got a Tumblr and a Facebook fan page and an Instagram that I haven't updated in years. Uh, yeah, uh, Twitter. That's where you can find me. Like like every legit comic professional, I spend all day on Twitter. <laughs> awesome. Well, everyone, don't forget to pick up issues 26, 27, and 28 of Superman and definitely check out Copperhead. That will be back uh, in single issue form in October? Uh, it 14 just came out. I think there's a break month and then the trade. Uh, the trade in August? I don't know if there's a break month after that or not. There probably is. So October sounds bright-ish. All right. Well, if it's not October, I will double-check it and edit that out. So... Anyways, thank you once again, Scott, for being on, and we'll be right back. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks for staying up so late. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you a jock that likes comics? Are you a nerd that likes comics? Do you feel left out sometimes? Well, then we've got the show for you. I'm Imran. And I'm Anthony. He's the jock. And he's the nerd. And we host the Jock and Nerd podcast at jockandnerd.com. If you're looking for fun, entertaining, laugh-out-loud geek chat over all the latest Marvel DC shows and news... Visit jockandnerd.com. Full spoiler podcast. Lots of swearing. Uh, you're such a jock. You're such a nerd. Oh, come on. Shut up, nerd. Okay. All right, everyone. Welcome back. That was a great interview. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> and if you noticed, we had to do it at a very odd time for us. So Ellie was a little bit tired, to say the least. I love the way every, we're using I'm tired as an excuse. Maybe I'm just that weird normally. Mm, fascinating. <laughs> um, no, we, we, we had a lot of fun. And thanks again to Scott for coming on. Yes, um, it was so much I'm fun. I'm sure he'll be on at some point again to we talk about something. We enjoy him enabling our craziness. Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for enabling our craziness. Yes. Um. But we, we've got a few things to, to do before we wrap up. Um, I guess one thing is, if you followed our Twitter, I actually played Magic Friday Night Magic for the first time in five years. And um, I actually went to a store that's very 
that's not local to us, but I had to go out a little bit. But it was a fun experience. It was at uh, it was at G2K Games, and I actually had a lot of fun. They did modern setting, mm-hmm. and I actually found out that some of my cards in my mill deck were illegal. I didn't think they were. Oops. Uh, but I didn't play with that one. I actually okay. decided to go with my um, vampire deck, which... I had jokingly named Twilight because I got a lot of foils in there, so they're sparkly. And I renamed it halfway <laughs> through playing to the Lost oh. Boys to mock oh. Scott. But I think he jinxed it with a tweet. So, because I, I, oh. I actually went, I actually went, went three and one. So I was, I think I did okay for my How first time back. How was the naming your deck Twilight received? I, I had sparkly vampires in it. No one can argue with that. Did, okay, so they didn't say anything. I just got this weird look, and I mean, it's it's one thing. It, it's it's kind okay. of that thing when when you're playing somebody and you're hitting them for ten life. I mean, for ten life a turn, that they're they're kind of not going to argue with you saying that the name of your deck is Twilight. Okay, I'll just like, like I said, it has sparkly vampires in it. Well, it makes sense within the regards to it. But if you want to hear more about that, I mean, this is this is the plug for a Patreon. Um, I will be posting a breakdown of the games and of that deck on um, Wednesday this week. I'll have that up. So so definitely check that out. But we, for people who are not Patreon subscribers, have some other content coming out this week. It was foretold that we would do battle with another podcast <laughs> over the top 10 yes. most sci- epic sci-fi, most epic high fantasy movies that did not make their war movies list yeah and we did battle with down the hall podcast and that episode will be out on thursday that that whole epic build up to nothing that was just terrible well you you, you want to pitch it real quick what i'm just depressed after that anyways <laughs> uh definitely check that out i'll have that up on thursday um we joined forces with down the hall over our much anticipated top 10 list of sci-fi and fantasy war movies Yes. And we did put a lot of restrictions on ourselves for mm-hmm. this list, so it, it is interesting within that regard. But it, it was a lot of fun, and our whole point of that episode, and I think we, we all, we all as hosts, all four of us walked away with something to watch. And that's what we want you to go do, yeah. is to, do either the recommendations other podcasters made, or what we talk about in the episode, hopefully you walk away with something to watch afterwards. Because we right. certainly did, for better or for worse. <laughs> Um, anyways, check out our most recent Star Wars, A New Hope, that came out last week, so definitely check that out. And I guess that's it for plugging stuff this week. Oh, no, wait, we got one more thing. It's Shark Week. Rawr! So, well, I, sharks don't really rawr, but I, I don't know. I'm sorry. It's okay. Munch, um, munch, munch. There you go. So, <laughs> favorite shark-related movie? Go. Oh, no. Um, On the spot. <laughs> So, how about Megalodon versus the octopus one? Sure. I can't remember the name of it. But, of course, Jaws is always a great series. I was going to go with Jaws or Sharknado, because why not? not, No, you can't say Sharknado. Okay, fine. Favorite shark? The Megalodon. Dang it, that's mine. That's (laughs) mine. You took mine. How can you not take the Megalodon? It's a giant shark. That, it's giant enough for us to both. Yes, that fair enough. Yes. It's a big enough shark for both of us. Yes. Well, there's our plug for Shark Week. I mean, like I said, we're not being sponsored by that or anything. So, obviously, if you want to go watch Shark Week or if you're a fan of sharks like everyone is, go check that out. But um, as for us, if you want to check more stuff out from us, you can always go to... Podbean. Yes, we are on Podbean now, so check us out on Podbean. You can also find us on you can also find us on iTunes. And if you are on iTunes, what do you do, Ali? Give us a five star review. We greatly appreciate it. It helps us out a ton and we will read it on the podcast. Um, you can also find us, of course, on Stitcher. If you want to find us on Facebook, you can of course always search Zingness. Twitter is at Zingness. And if you want to go to Instagram at Zingness Podcast and look at some cool pics. You can also find us playing games every now and then on twitch.tv slash Zing This. And if you want to find us on YouTube, just search Zing This. And if you want to contribute to the podcast and help support us, you can always go to www.patreon.com slash Zing This. And as I said, I will be putting out that exclusive audio of me discussing more about the magic game I played the other day. 
And finally, if you want to get a hold of us directly, you can go to zingthis at gmail.com. And if you want any of Scott's information, that will also be in the description. And our sound guy, as always, is Aaron. And finally, DJ Golden Boy. 89. Play us out. Stitcher and LinkedIn. Oh. <laughs>